Uh, immediately after uh, after university, I entered a, an industry where the, the partner I ended up with was uh, consulting for the pharmaceutical industry. And via different projects, I, I got a little bit insight into the statistical programming role. That led me to accept the job offer I got eventually, um, which basically was my dream job come true uh, back then. But I didn't know when, uh, when I started my education and I didn't know when I ended my education. I didn't know anything about the pharmaceutical industry uh, when I started the role uh, as part of a, a huge project I was working on, also for Novo Nordisk by, by the vendor uh, or by the consultant agency, it was SAS Institute. Um, I learned more about the workplace in Novo Nordisk. I learned more about the, the role uh, and it really, really appealed to me and to, to my competencies and, and what I wanted to do as well. Then I joined Novo, got a, a nice offer and uh, couldn't say no. And despite SAS being a perfect place to work, uh, Novo, Novo was my inspiration. University of Copenhagen, uh, they had these uh, events where companies could come out and, uh, and, and have a stand at promoting the different companies and telling about what it was. And, and it was uh, quite intimidating as a quite poor student, uh, not really knowing what was the perfect career afterwards to, to build up the courage and go and talk to these guys. But I talked to the SAS Institute stand. Uh, about two days after I handed in my thesis, uh, they contacted me, invited me for an interview. And um, somehow I got the job. So I, I wanted to work with SAS Institute. Uh, and they ended up offering me a job and I started working there. And luckily, it was in a, in a, in a department uh, where, where they, they were dealing with the pharmaceutical industry. Uh, and after a year or so, uh, I ended up in a big project uh, working for Novo Nordisk. About two years later, two and a half years later, uh, the project was uh, coming to an end and Novo eventually offered a job uh, as a st statistical programmer. It was my dream to come work for Novo Nordisk. Uh, Novo has always been one of the most dominant and best places to work in Denmark. Uh, we have a yearly uh, event where all, uh, all the employees across the bigger companies vote for uh, how good their own company is and, and Novo ends up on, in, the, in the top five always, no matter what. Uh, and uh, I would love to go in a place that, that is good for the employees as well. Plus, in, a, in, in the pharmaceutical industry where we also create something that is uh, to the benefit of patients and people in need at the other end. I've been working for Novo for the last 13 years. In the first two, three years, we were building um, a standard library or a standard framework for, for enriched data, for converting uh, some raw data, enriching it with metadata in a, in a streamlined uh, manner. So we had a, a fixed data model at the other end, very much inspired by the STTM model. Um, and we built that library uh, and I was responsible for, for, for doing that with a bunch of consultants and brilliant, brilliant subject matter experts. Uh, very, very vibrant environment we were part of in the, in the beginning. It was a lot of fun. Um, and then uh, I think I was there for about four, four and a half years in, in that department. And then um, I got an opportunity to, to shift into what we know what is called the international lead programmer role uh, within one of our clinical areas called inflammation. And that was a huge, huge, huge uh, development step for me because I, I've been in a sort of cheese bowl uh, in, a, in an environment where, 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 where we developed standards sort of uh, and, and not really on clinical trials and to, to be dropped out uh, in, in the deep ocean uh, to, to work on clinical trials. That was a big challenge and needed a lot of uh, help and support from my fellow programmers around the organization for both mentorship, but also support. But it was a lot of fun and a very, very learning couple of years there in, in, in that role until Novo, uh, for good reasons, decided to, to stop the investments within the inflammation area and, and we closed down the area. Then I was uh, applying for a job, uh, also in a central uh, role again, uh, in a sort of programming anchor setting we have with Novo Nordisk and, and, and got that one. We have a sort of specialist career path in Novo Nordisk and this was a a step up and then I was approached by colleagues and leaders at Novo that it would maybe be a good idea to, uh, to try out leadership. So I was offered a team leader role uh, at that time point, which I applied for uh, and got. Uh, and then I've been within leadership for the last six and a half years. So I shifted from biostatistics to data management areas. And then we've been building the STM competencies, uh, STM standards, 
the SCTM framework that we deliver SCTM by no notice since that time point. And now I'm responsible for, uh, for maintaining the SCTM standards, the SCTM standard programs, uh, and the actual the SCTM deliverables also, uh, also across all clinical trials with no notice in, in my current role. A very, very fun journey that I can look back at, and I probably wouldn't be sitting here if I hadn't gone and, and, and talked to the SAS Institute stand at the university. Maybe my career would have been totally different. That was sort of the defining moment for me that started my career. Timing and a lot of luck and a lot of coincidence has gone into also uh, where I am today. What I did and the way I acted had something to do with the, the opportunities that presented itself for me. And that I try to always follow what I like to do, uh, follow where the energy is. I seem to perform by far the best when it's something that uh, I enjoy doing, of course. Uh, and of course, we can't do that 100% of the time. Uh, but, uh, but at least 10-15% uh, of my time, if, I, if it's possible for me to do something that I really, really love, then, um, then opportunities magically seems to, to come uh, for, uh, for going those ways, for, uh, for pursuing the stuff that is really interesting. And whether that is programming or leadership or project management, uh, following your subject matter expertise to, to the extreme, doesn't matter. If you love it, then... Uh, and you need to follow it. The amount of abbreviation, three letter or four letter abbreviations in this business is to the extreme. We don't only write a lot of sentences with, the, with three letter abbreviations. We also speak three letter abbreviations or four letter or five letter abbreviations. No? I mean, a sentence like, uh, we have the CTQNAM uh, for the IMP and the RCT yet. Uh, well, the IMP has requested the TDM to provide an ASAP uh, after the last DQC, however, before DBO. Uh, and I know what it means now, but I have had no clue what it meant back then. And coming from outside, it's very, very difficult to, to follow uh, the talk in the office and, and follow what is written in the standard operating procedures, which is sort of the foundation before you start working. The, the solution to it was having patience myself, but also having some, some mentors or, and some colleagues uh, and some, some more experienced persons around me who could, who could actually take the time to explain me for the seventh time uh, what DBO meant. It's a little less about being a brilliant programmer. It's much more about being a team player, regardless of how many languages, uh, programming languages, or how good skills you have, it's very rare that, that you can do a, a task on your own. We are dependent on multiple, multiple functions and roles in the industry internally in the companies. And that requires that our ability to listen and, and collaborate is, is very, very uh, dominant. And it's much more about understanding the, the context program you're going to write. What is the, the, the purpose? What is your dependencies? The collateral damage of, uh, of not knowing the the dependencies of other departments or uh, the receivers of the data might be quite uh, devastating. And I think the last part will probably be being a little bit humble uh, and not uh, you know, focusing on uh, what's the next step. In one year, I need to reach this level or this level or this level, but uh, looking a little more also at the big picture of the importance of, of the job, the importance of what we're trying to do for, for patients in the other end or for other parts of the organization or for our clients or, or, uh, or for each other. The soft skills are very, very important to learn fast and to grow. The requirements uh, to the standards keep changing. In my current line of work, we are, we are very dependent on a standard development organization called CDISC. Uh, they are ba basically standardizing across the farm industry on the data format that we, we send to the, to the authorities around the world. The individual authorities and FDA or, or the, the Japanese PMDA or the Chinese NMPA and soon also EMA and for, for Europe, uh, they have their own tweaks. Uh, they have their own, uh, a few of their own requirements as well. We need to stay on top of those. And they change from time to time. And we have newer versions of the standards also from the CDS organization um, for very, very good reasons. Uh, it's a constant development and it has to be. We need to ensure that all our standards are constantly up to date with what is required from the authorities and from CDIS. So that, 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 that alone is a, is, 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 a, is a challenge because it's complex and there's a lot of dependencies. But another one is, is also the internal understanding of 
why we have these standards uh, from, from areas that doesn't know a lot of what we do. And that, uh, that, that is a challenge uh, to, to ensure that our stakeholders understand why we can't do what they want us to do due to requirements at the far end from FDA or PMDA or CDISC or something else. We are very, very dependent on people keeping the finger on the pulse and understanding the requirements coming in depth. And we have a, a setting where the necessary experts from the different areas, both from the authority perspective and from the standards perspective and from the statistical perspective and from the medical writing perspective and all the different areas within a pharmaceutical industry sits together and evaluate the new requirements that comes and make action plans and ensure that they are carried out, that we are in, in constant compliance uh, from, from the data submission perspective and from the data collection perspective and the way we handle uh, our data. And that also dictates that the training material and that the standard, standard operating procedures, the guides that tells us what to do internally, that they are constantly updated accordingly as well. And then the current company in Novo, uh, and I guess in a lot of other companies, uh, there's a high um, focus on development. That means that we are constantly aware of uh, everybody's wishes for the next year and for the next two years and for the next five years and can ensure that the work-related tasks um, helps develop uh, each of us in, in the direction we wish to go, as long as it's in the interest of uh, the high interest of the company in the area, of course. But in my career, I had a need for, uh, for something new, for developing my competencies. It was actually possible to do that. So when, uh, when I had been programming for a lot of years in, in a central place uh, in, for, for standard programs, I had the opportunity to, to move sideways into the operational part of the organization and do trial work. Eventually, I had the opportunity to go in sideways again or into another part of the organization. And that's, that's nice and rewarding to work with and, and work in a company where you, where you have that feeling. Uh, a, a lot more than what had happened has happened the last 10 years, that's for sure. Uh, we are in a very, very fast development in the industry. One of the things that I, I've, at least my first uh, thinking was that, uh, well, we, we're going to be more programming language uh, agnostic. And, and uh, uh, 10 years ago, it was SAS code. And that was it, basically. And uh, when, when creating submissions and creating cl clinical trials uh, and, and handling clinical trials data, but uh, that is changing now. We have a lot of other languages coming. So that, that's, uh, that is what is happening right now and has been happening the last couple of years and will continue to happen, I take it, but more languages will be accepted when submitting compared to earlier. I think that the industry is going to a more, more automated state. One of the things I'm, I'm hoping for and thinking is that the, the manual parts of the process where you map from one system to another, or you fill out specifications that automatically, uh, um, that, that made other parts automatically uh, will go away. And, and when we collect the data, it will, it will be um, in the final form that, we, uh, that it's collected indirectly. So it's submission ready. Uh, and that means that a lot of the manual processes, a lot of the trial-specific uh, programming, uh, a lot of the pain holding that, uh, that we, we do, a lot of us uh, will go away and be replaced by other tasks for, for programmers and, and for us. If you uh, can increase your skills and increase your knowledge uh, while uh, uh, making your colleagues look good uh, in parallel uh, and, and and you know, playing each other uh, across the team, uh, your career is going to take off uh, much, much faster than if you focus on you know building your skills and on the next step of your career uh, and and what you need to reach within year one and year two, etc. The second part is that you take the time to reflect on what you like. The first half year, a year that you're employed, that's about learning and, and, and learning how to be in a corporate uh, situation uh, in, in a corporate setting. Uh, but after that, uh, reflecting a little bit about uh, where you get your energy from, what, uh, what task gives you energy, what task doesn't give you energy, and why is that? So you learn more about yourself and, and what you like to do and what you don't like to do. It's very, very good to be ambitious, and I do believe that it's extremely important to be ambitious and want to reach stuff. But so, so focusing too much on that leads to disappointment. And, and, 
So there has to be some sort of balance. And uh, I think that's important for me to say, enjoy the work uh, equally to, to being ambitious. That, that's very, very important.